All right, everybody, this time we got some deformed cattle, some mutant kids, some 50-year-old strippers, and it's all wrapped up in a traveling sideshow. Away we go. All right, this time we're looking at 1981's The Fun House, but before we go any further, the trailer. Something is alive in the funhouse. Something not alive like its father. Something better dead. Something that has the form of a human, but not the face. This better be good. It's gonna be great. Something that feeds off the flesh and blood of young innocents. Come on, here we go. This is it. Something that tonight will turn the funhouse into a carnival of terror. The Fun House, coming soon from Universal Pictures. The Fun House, it's a carnival of terror from Toby Hooper, the director who terrified you with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All right, this movie was directed in 1981 by Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper sadly passed away last year in 2017. It's kind of a shame that we lost him, but he made a great impact on the whole genre of horror and movie making in general. He gave us flicks like uh, Invaders from Mars and Life Force, and he did uh, Salem's Lot, the TV mini movie, which was just phenomenal. And also he gave us one of the all-time greats, Poltergeist. You know, a lot of people say things about Poltergeist, like that was a... Uh, Steven Spielberg was on the set every day and he was, you know, directing Toby Hooper and he was taking over the reins. And any way you cut it, I don't care. If you watch The Fun House, there are as many a scenes in The Fun House where you can say, oh my God, that's the same shot that I saw in Poltergeist. That's the same camera angle that he used in Poltergeist. So yeah, Steven might have been on the set all the time. Maybe he was given ideas or hints. But if you watch The Fun House and you watch Poltergeist, it's undeniable that that was a Toby Hooper movie. Just saying. Okay, playing Amy, we got Elizabeth Barrage. Elizabeth Barrage has been around for a while. She's still acting today, amazingly. You know, believe it or not, she was on the John Larroquette show. She was in Amadeus. She was in the movie Hidalgo. Hidalgo, Hidalgo, whatever like that. She works on the stage. So she's had a career that's been going longer than you think. Sometimes you see these people in you know, a movie like this, and you're like, whatever happened to, whatever happened to. They must have just disappeared. But she's still out there. She's still working. And she did a really good job in this movie. So, you know, thumbs up. Okay, in the movie, Sean Carson played Joey Harper, Amy's little brother. He was in a couple kid movies around back then. Uh, he was obviously in The Fun House. He was in... Uh, something wicked this way comes and stuff like that but really he just totally disappeared from the scene after anything like that so he was one of those kids came made him a few movies and pff, god only knows what happened to him but wish the kid well okay next we got cooper huckabee who played buzz amy's boyfriend day of the night whatever you will he's actually had a very long career in the business he's been acting since back then all the way steadily to today he was in movies like yeah you know, obviously we have him here but he was also in uh, Space Cowboys with Clint Eastwood, and he was in The General's Daughter with John Travolta. He's been in a slew of television shows, and he's still actually working all the time. So he's one of those kind of guys where he's changed a lot over the years, he's aged a bit, so when you see him, you don't really make the connection, hey, that's the dude from Funhouse, but hey, that's the dude from Funhouse. So it's good to see that his career worked out, and he's still working regularly in movies and television, and he's had a really good career. So. Thumbs up. Okay. Playing Amy's friend Liz is Largo Woodruff. Largo Woodruff, her career has been kind of spotty on and off, in and out. She does these like bit parts in other movies. She kind of like crops up here and there. She was uh, somebody in a car in Jeepers Creepers too. 
she was in Stardust Memories. Like there would be these like these little these little little bit parts she would come in. I mean, nothing more. I don't think she'd done anything really as major as this role before or after. And uh, so you know, I don't know whatever really happened to her career, where she's really doing today, other than she's a legend for Funhouse. Okay, Miles Chapin plays Richie. If you were anybody watching movies a lot in that 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 time frame, Miles Chapin popped up in a lot of flicks. Like you'd never really know who this dude was, but you would recognize the face. He was just one of those kind of characters. He popped up in movies like Hair and Howard the Duck and The People vs. Larry Flint and and you know this just he was just always kind of like popping up. He was on TV shows like you know he would be on Kate and Alley or he would be on uh, Murder She Wrote or something like that. But he was never a breakout star. I don't think he's done anything in like recent years by any stretch of the imagination. But there was a period of time where he was just cropping up here and there. And you'd be like, I know that dude. I know that dude. And I know it. Funhouse, dude. Okay, playing Madame Zena, the fortune teller, was Sylvia Miles. Sylvia Miles has had a long career in Hollywood. She was, in, she was going way back to like she was in the... Uh, Midnight Cowboy. She was in Wall Street. She popped up in Evil Under the Sun. And she continued to be in a lot of motion pictures, even after Funhouse. Not, like, again, she wasn't the big star leading lady or anything like that, but she made her imprint in Hollywood. She had a lot of good work and anything she was in. She always did a solid job, so kudos. Okay. One of my favorite actors in this movie is Kevin Conway, and simply because if you watch the picture, he's the carnival barker. But watch closely, he's every carnival barker. He's the one at the front door in the black leather with the blonde hair. Come on! He's also the father of the, the, the murderer. I don't want to give too much away, or maybe I will later, who knows. He's the guy with the hat in the black wig on saying come see the ladies they're gonna strip for you tonight and all that he played all of them in completely different makeup and completely different looks and it was so cool that this one guy popped up three times in the movie and as you're watching him you're saying but this guy looks familiar like you but it's because it's the same guy i don't know if they did that as a as a secret homage that this half this traveling thing was just like inbred freak show i have no idea why they did it but it was cool that they did it. It was very interesting and very fun to watch. And plus, he's been on a lot of other shows, too. He's done so many TV shows from Oz to The, the Outer Limits to uh, uh, Law and Order. To, I mean, he's just been around so many things. This guy's had a really long career. And if somebody, you look in the movie, you say, I have no idea what ever happened to this guy. He's, like, too freaky to be really... But no, he really had a great career going for him. So he was great in all the different roles he played. Did a phenomenal job. Much respect. Okay, again, I'm the glory days of Cathode Rays. I'm never going to give you the full story about what happens in these movies because I want you to go out there and experience and learn and, and find out all the stuff for yourself. But I'm going to give you enough of the story just to get rolling. So away we go. The movie starts out with such an homage to Halloween and Psycho that it's almost frightening. I mean, it's like a setup. You see the killer going through the house, you see the whole nine yards, and he puts the mask on, you see through the two slits, and what's he going to do? He's going to kill a girl in the shower. Now, I'm not going to give too much away, but is isn't exactly the way that you think it's going to go. But it was an interesting way to start the movie, and a cool little nod by to uh, Toby Hooper to Halloween and to Psycho. When does the good girl in the group the one that you're supposed to be sympathetic to, the one that you're supposed to be rooting for, do a nude scene like 60 seconds into the flick. Who? You'd be like Laurie Strode running around naked in the first three minutes of Halloween. It just doesn't happen. But to be, they did it in this one. It was cool. It was like, wow. Heavy. I'm not knocking it. So her uh, date for the night buzz picks her up, and then they go grab the two friends, and off to the fair they go. Now, she was supposed to bring her little brother, Joey. She left Joey at home for reasons that I don't want to state yet, but you'll know why. They all go to the fair, they have a good time, they're going to the carnival barking stuff, they're watching the strip shows, they're watching the mutilated cattle and weird looking deformed cows and all this other kind of stuff. They go see Madame Zena, the fortune teller, and she kicks them out because they're a bunch of snotty little ass kids making fun of her. So they're having a regular night doing what teenagers do, or in this case, they look like they're in their 20s, but we're gonna believe that they're teenagers, why not? 
well, why don't we hide out in the fun house? Stay over night. While staying there, they see some things they shouldn't say. They can kind of see into a secret room underneath the fun house. And they see under there this guy that had just been running the rides earlier, Frankenstein. And all of a sudden, Xena shows up. What's going down? This is kind of weird. All you know is something's weird because the Frankenstein guy never takes his mask off and he just happens to drip KY jelly out of his mouth all the time. Hey, well, apparently things don't go right and he wasn't quite up to the task, shall we say. From there on out, it's just teenagers being chased, monsters running around. Oh yeah, he takes off the mask. It's an early, early 80s horror film that's well done, and it has a good tone to it. A lot of motion pictures these days, especially a lot of horror motion pictures, they might have some good scenes, they might have some good parts, they might have some good ideas, but the tone of the movie doesn't last and doesn't stay all the way through. There's a weird feeling to it, an unsettling feeling to it, an uncomfortable feeling to it. It just, it just makes you feel off, almost dirty to a degree. But you throw that together with a good cast, they weren't all names, they weren't all stars, but they did a phenomenal job. The, car the carnival barkers all felt sleazy and scummy, and the strippers all looked like they really would be 50-year-old strippers that had just been hanging around the carnival tunnel lawn. Madame Zena looked creepy and old, like a Madame Zena would look. There's even some old lady in the movie running around doing that. You're all going to die. Jesus is going to get you. Everybody is so far from looking like a clean-cut actor. They look like the people that you would see at a traveling car carnival sideshow. They looked like the kind of people that you would run into in these kind of places. And that made it all the more believable. They didn't try to pretty it up, and they didn't go too far and make these people look like comic book characters. Okay, maybe the old lady that was running around saying Jesus is going to get you. But other than that, they all looked the part, they all sounded the part, they played it fairly well, and they just left you feeling uneasy. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Check out The Fun House, 1981, a uh, forgotten gem, a class A movie, really good time. Peace out, y'all.